Welcome to Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School Lesson for Sunday, June 5th, 2022. I am Rev. Mary Tillman, an Associate Minister at Pleasant Green, and I will be the presenter of today's lesson. We're starting a new quarter. Our summer quarter is Partners in a New Creation. We're in Unit 1, and our theme for this unit is God Delivers and Restores. This is lesson number one in unit one. The lesson title in the Townsend Press Sunday School Commentary is God Foretells Destruction. In the Faith Pathway Bible Studies for Adults lesson, the title is Nowhere to Run. Our devotional reading, Micah chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. The background scripture, Isaiah 47. The printed passage is Isaiah 47, verses 10 through 15. I encourage you to read the entire 47th chapter. Our key verse for today's lesson is Isaiah 47, verse 15. From the NIV Bible, it reads, That is all they are to you. These you have dealt with and labored with since childhood. All of them go on in their error. There is not one that can save you. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for the opportunity to study your holy word. Please open our understanding so that we may learn how to live a life that is pleasing to you in every way. Let us not lean to our own understanding, but ask and depend on you to lead and guide us on our Christian journey. It is in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. Let's look at our lesson introduction. As I said, we begin our new summer quarter with this week's lesson. And the theme is Partners in a New Creation. Members of Christ's body have the grand opportunity to be co-laborers with the ever-abiding Spirit of God in reconciling, recreating, and rightly restoring all things in the eternal reign of God. This summer quarter considers ways in which believers are partners with God in creation. Unit 1, God Delivers and Restores, has four lessons. Using three chapters of the book of Isaiah, this lesson explores God's predictions of the future destruction of Babylon and deliverance of Israel. These events were evidence of God's posture at work to grant mercy and redemption to the penitent and to restore God's people to a state of peace and prosperity. So get your Sunday school book, your Bible, pen and notepad and follow along as we go forward with this lesson. Let's get started. As always, I've got three questions for you to consider. Question number one, what did the Babylonians boast about having? Question number two, who did the Babylonians look to for their guidance and direction and protection? And question number three, what were the proud Babylonians urged to go ahead and do? Let's look at the lesson's biblical context. Isaiah is the author. He's a strong, courageous man of God who fiercely proclaimed God's word. The book of the prophet Isaiah is considered to be the most prolific of the Old Testament's prophetic books. Many of the prophecies of Isaiah contain predictions that foretell of a soon occurring event and a distant coming event at the same time. When I was a child, I remember hearing the preachers say that Isaiah was known as that eagle-eyed prophet because his prophecies were sometimes hundreds of years away but he prophesied as God directed. You remember it was Isaiah who prophesied about the birth of our Messiah, Jesus Christ. In chapter 47, Isaiah describes the decline, defall, and humiliations that awaited a proud and haughty Babylonian empire. Chapter 47 deals with the destruction of Babylon. This lesson's selected text is from the second half of the book of Isaiah, which includes chapters 40 through 66. These chapters contain prophecies and warnings to Judah and span the period from the Babylonian captivity to Christ's first advent and the establishment of his future kingdom. 
Babylon would soon face the days of its destruction. In their arrogant pride, the Babylonians claimed to be divine and undefeatable, but disaster would come when God took vengeance on them, for no one would be able to deliver them from God's sovereign power. It is a message of promise. It confirms the inevitable, inescapable judgment and demise of Babylon. Although Isaiah's prediction of Babylon's fall was spoken and recorded 150 years before it occurred, the timeless message of the escape and God's faithfulness to his promises is explicitly clear to those who choose to rebel against him and oppress his people. Judah was warned and refused to obey and was severely punished. God chose Gentile nations as instruments of punishment to Israel and Judah. One of the most notorious of these nations was the godless empire of Babylon. Babylon was used as Judah's disciplinary and chastiser for rebelling against God. He used Babylon to punish his people. Babylon showed no mercy. They were cruel to God's people. Soon Babylon would experience the same kind of suffering and shame she had caused on Judah. God would use the Persians to destroy Babylon. Babylon's removal was God's judgment of her excessive cruelty to Judah and to their idolatry and to their arrogance and pride. The same suffering, shame, and humiliation that they inflicted on Judah was inevitable for them. It was their sentence. The time was coming when she would experience what she had inflicted upon others. Remember, what we do to others eventually comes back to us. What we sow, we shall also reap. Isaiah describes the Babylonian Empire metaphorically as the daughter of Babylon. Babylon is personified as a royal daughter, fallen from her lofty status and forced to serve as a slave girl. Babylon was a great empire. It was powerful. It was the queen of the civilized world. She was the mightiest of the mighty. They lived a life of luxury. The Babylonians were so confident of their ability to dominate the future that they even attempted to control the spirit world through magic spells and sorceries. They were devoted to mastering magical arts and were convinced they could ward off any calamity that threatened them. But in Isaiah chapter 47, we learn that she would soon meet one mightier than she. Okay, let's dive into the study of this lesson. This week's aims are, one, to understand why God would destroy Babylon, to grapple with the destructiveness of delighting in power and pleasure, and to repent from thoughts, actions, and feelings that separate believers from God. There are two lesson outlines in the Adult Pathway Sunday School book. I will share two key points from each of these outlines and expound some on each of them. The first outline is pride comes before a fall, and the second outline is trusting a false religion. Let's look at outline number one. Pride comes before a fall. And we find that in Isaiah 47, verses 10 and 11, and it reads, You have trusted your wickedness and have said, No one sees me. Your wisdom and knowledge mislead you when you say to yourself, I am, and there is none besides me. By the way, this is from the NIV translation. Verse number 11 Disaster will come upon you, and you will not know how to conjure it away. A calamity will fall upon you that you cannot ward off with a ransom. A catastrophe you cannot foresee will suddenly come upon you. Key point number one. God hates pride. Pride leads to self-worship, self-exaltation, and eventually judgment and destruction. Proverbs 16 and 18 says, Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. The prophet Isaiah accuses Babylon of having a false sense of security of self-confidence. 
Babylon thought she was divine and no one could see the wrong she was doing to other nations. She abused and mistreated and misused God's people. Babylon thought she could get away with it as we read in verse number 10. God has an all-seeing eye. He sees and knows everything. Babylon acted as though God did not exist and no one could judge her. You cannot mistreat and misuse God's people and get away with it. Babylon boasted of being a confident power, being accountable to no one but herself. This nation's arrogant mindset led to the belief that they were the only world power. They thought they were untouchable. Babylon grew proud and acted as though she was God. The enemies of God's people, the Babylonians, arrogantly proclaimed, I am and none else beside me. But there was one who was and who is watching then and now. We can rest assured that God is watching and will one day call us to give an account Even when we are most confident in our own abilities to go it alone without God, we are sure to fail. The Babylonians felt that they were self-existent and did not need God. We are most inclined to fail when we move ahead as if we are God without the guidance and direction of our God. As I go through this lesson, I hope you can see the way the world is today, how pertinent this lesson is to our situation today. Nations against nations, children against parents, parents against children, people killing with no reason at all, people feeling like they have no one to give an account to but themselves. If it feels good, that's what I'm going to do. Let's look at verse number 11. It says, Disaster will come upon you and you will not know how to conjure it away. A calamity will fall upon you that you cannot ward off with a ransom. A catastrophe you cannot foresee will suddenly come upon you. God declares through the prophet that evil in the form of a calamity and a catastrophe would descend upon Babylon as a result of the evil she had nurtured. Disaster did come upon Babylon, and Babylon was suddenly conquered in one night. They suffered divine justice. Verse 11 says they believed all was safe and secure, as we read in Daniel chapter 5. The ultimate fall of Babylon is recorded in the fifth chapter of Daniel. Please read it at your earliest convenience. They kind of tie everything together with this lesson. They thought they were untouchable. Pride blinded the Babylonians to truth that God controls both the future and the destiny of his creation. The Bible teaches us the love of God, but it also identifies the things he hates, and one of these is pride. Key point number two, God hates a prideful spirit. God despised the Babylonians' pride. Those consumed with pride focus on themselves and not on the sovereignty of God. Pride places individuals at odds with God until they repent, acknowledge him as the source of all things. Babylon is going to become a powerless nation and they will be destroyed. Outline number two, trusting a false religion. And we find this in Isaiah 47 verses 12 through 15. From the NIV Bible, it reads, Keep on, then, with your magic spells and with your many sorceries, which you have labored at since childhood. Perhaps you will succeed. Perhaps you will cause terror. All the counsel you have received has only worn you out. Let your astrologers come forward, those stargazers who make predictions month by month. Let them save you from what is coming upon you. Surely they are like stubble. The fire will burn them up. They cannot even save themselves from the power of the flame. These are not coals for warmth. This is not a fire to sit by. That is all they are to you. These you have dealt with and labored with since childhood. All of them go on in their era. There is not one that can save you. The scripture said, go ahead. The prophet urged, 
and continue to put your trust in this foolishness. He knew that in the end, all such efforts would come to nothing. The prophet knew God had already rendered his verdict on the Babylonians. Key point number one, God wants us to trust him as our only source of deliverance. The Babylonians also believed that they had discovered the key to worldly success. They depended on a system of sorceries and used it to foretell the future and cast out spells under the influence of demonic powers. Verse 13 reads, All the counsel you have received has only worn you out. Let your astrologers come forth. Those stargazers who make predictions month by month, let them save you from what is coming upon you. Babylon thought their pride and wisdom would protect them from disaster, but they would soon experience the catastrophe ordered by God. The business of magic and divination in order to know the future was big business in Babylon. There were classes of priests whose job it was to read the sacrificial animals, looking for clues to the future. The Babylonians wanted to be able to control their future. They thought they were smart and powerful enough to do such a thing if they could just know the future far enough in advance. The prophet, directed by God, is saying to Babylon, turn now to your astrologers and stargazers as a way to save you. They will not help you on the day of your judgment. Destruction is coming. The people relied on their magicians to predict the coming of the enemy. They felt they were in control of their own existence and did not need God. Amazingly enough, the horoscope is still functional today. Instead of searching the scriptures and praying for God's will and direction, many people religiously open the newspaper or some other media device daily to read their horoscope. Sadly, this is true even of some Christians. The search To know what lies ahead in order to gain some control over our lives is nothing other than a continuation of what the Babylonians did long ago. Key point number two. God wants us to surrender our lives and futures into his hands for direction and blessing. All attempts to know more than God, to go beyond God, and to live life without God's direction are ultimately doomed for failure. Verse 14 says, Surely they are like stubble. The fire will burn them up. They cannot even save themselves from the power of the flame. These are not coals for warmth. This is not a fire to sit by. Babylon's astrologers were compared to stubble. The consequences of trusting in astrology and magical spells resulted in the Babylonian leaders being as dry stubble that fire can quickly consume. The point is that such people will be quickly destroyed. The prophet says they would not be able to deliver themselves. Not only could the sorcerers not deliver the others from God's judgment, they could not deliver themselves. The fire of judgment would come upon them and it would be severe. It would not be coals to get warmed by or to sit by. And verse 15 says, That is all they are to you. These you have dealt with and labored with since childhood. All of them go on in their error. There is not one that can save you. This is true for all who will not seek and find salvation in the Lord. If you will not look to him and be saved, then certainly, my brothers and sisters, no one can save you. In our summary outline, Babylon's nowhere to turn experience is a message for the world today. Pride and dependence on the occult are one-way tickets to destruction. Babylon's persistence and trust in her false religion of sorcery as an escape did not prevent God's wrath and God's judgment. The only path to escape God's righteous judgment is repentance and submission to God's sovereign lordship. The believer's responsibility is to pray, read the word for direction and deliverance. God knows how to humble the proud 
and those who think they can do whatever they want without ever being held accountable. We see how God handled the Babylonians. Believers should also heed the warning to avoid the demonic practices of sorcery, astrology, and magic. Everyone should reserve their highest loyalty and devotion for God alone. God does not allow for competition for the glory and worship that he and he alone deserves. That's our lesson for today. I hope it was an eye-opener or it is an eye-opener and they will, we will take heed to this lesson and not become so conceited and so lifted up in pride that we feel that we ourselves are above the wrath and the punishment that comes when we not, do not do the right thing and treat our brothers and sisters the way God wants us to be treated. Thank you for listening to this lesson today. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, teach us how to trust in you for all that we need. Remove from us the desire to dethrone you and crown ourselves as sovereign of our own lives. Help us to trust the plan that you have for us and forgive us when we fall short of the righteousness to which you have called us. Let us not lean to our own understanding, but in everything we do, dear God. Let us consult you for leading and guiding us, for you know the way. You already have planned the way. And help us to understand and walk in and knowing that no matter what we do, you promised you would never leave us or forsake us. Thank you for these lessons to open our eyes to walk the path of righteousness. It is in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. Thank you and have a great day.